Hooked up. My name is Morgan Kupfer. I am from Tightline Tales of a Fly Fisherman and Chesapeake Fly Company. Um, here at Tie Fest today, I'm going to tie the uh, one of my signature flies. I call it the Turd Burglar. Uh, it's a little crab pattern that can be variated and modified for um, for whatever type of species of crab in the area that you're going to be fishing for. Today we'll tie one for the Chesapeake Bay, a small blue crab. So I start off with a, uh, a size one Gamagatsu S SC15 hook. Usually you can tie it any variation based on the uh, the size of the, the the crab that you're looking for in the Bahamas, you can size it down, or you can si keep it at this size. In Belize, you can size it down for the smaller flies. So uh, yeah, I start off with some uh, tie my thread onto the hook, and we'll wind back, and then I'll use a little bit of mono. This is 12 pound. I usually use 20 pound, but I'll tie. I'll cut a little bit here. And I'll take some of the, the uh, UV knot sense from, from Loon Outdoors and just add a little tiny bit onto the end there, just a dollop. And you can twist it down until it makes the teardrop shape and then cure it with your UV light until it's cured. And you can see you get that eye formation, that mono eye. And then do it to the other side. And later today, I'll be mixing up some colors too. You can add glitter to it. You can add, uh, you know, some uh, phosphorescent stuff. You can, you can color it with a sharpie. Um, anything you want to just variate the colors and, and change the eye color. Today, I'll, uh, I'll actually just use a little bit of a sharpie here, and kind of just coat it with a little bit of, of, of uh, black sharpie to give it that darker eye. As you can see, it makes that dark eye there. And do both sides. And sometimes that happens where you'll, you'll, your loon will pop off if you don't put it on. The cover the, the mono enough. There we go. That's enough. That'll do. Cure it on again. Now we'll paint that one really quick. And you want the sizes to match up with the loon, um, the eyes, because you obviously want uniformity. I don't know any eye, any crabs that have crooked eyes. There we go. All right, eyes are done. We'll take a little bit of crystal flash. I'll just take a little bunch of it and go ahead and cut that. And you can take that flash and you can kind of change it, the, the lengths a little bit. And we'll tie in a little bit of your crystal flash. Cut off your extra. And then this is where you tie in your eyes. So I'll cut my eyes. And you tie them in right around that flash there. But you want them to pop a little bit out of the side, so you can either bend your mono or you can tie under them. You do the same for the other side here. There we go. And you can see how they kind of lay down a little bit. Cut off your extra. All right, so what I did here is I took a blue rubber band. You can take any standard rubber band um, and you can, uh, you can go ahead and color it any way you want to match the claws or the patterns of the crab's claws. Um, fiddle crabs, you can do a bigger rubber band and you can uh, cut it a claw so it's uh, obviously that bigger fiddle claw and then a smaller one. And what I did is I tied a knot in it. And uh, that kind of gives that elbow in that joint. And you'll cut a small V to give it that hook shape, just like that. And you do that with both claws. And you tie it into the side here. 
so that it sits on the outside of the eyes. And do that with the second clause here. Cut the little V really quick. And they can, they can go kind of crazy because when they're in the water, the buoyancy of the rubber, of the rubber band, is going to help uh, that kind of sit up higher, almost like the crab's raising its claws to attack the fish that's about to engulf it. Um, and so you go ahead and just kind of let those flop around. They'll go ahead and set themselves when they're in the water. They give pretty good action. And the way that this fly is going to ride is actually, this is going to be down on the bottom. You don't want that hook scraping. And you'll see I'll do it. We can do it weedless too. But these hook, these these uh, claws will actually kind of sit up like that. They'll go move buoyancy. They'll move up towards. So sometimes what I do is I'll wrap lead around this if I really want it to get down. But on flats, you know that's going to sit on the bottom by the time you're going to want to try and intercept that fish. Especially here in the bay, you know it, I'll use that that lead because it helps it really get down to where it needs to be. So we've got the claws in, and then comes the most important part: the body. I like to use the uh, Enrico Puglisi tarantula bl uh, brush. This stuff is absolutely awesome. I make a lot of my own brushes, but I, the way that he has all the brush spaced and the, uh, the tarantula fibers added in, it, it absolutely helps the entire body of this fly. And so I'll take the end of my brush and I'll tie it in right there at the base of the claws. You can tie up and cut off if there's any of the extra wire like these have. You can cut off your extra wire here. And then you'll wrap up. So then I'll let my brush sit back and I'll wrap up and that's where I take my bead chain eyes. Now again, you can add more weight by using lead eyes. You can use bead chain for shallow flats. Today we'll just use bead chain. Um, you can, those lead eyes will really help it get down or tungsten eyes. And then you'll want to tie it in right around the eye there on the top part of the hook just like this because again, that's the part that you want sitting on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and tie that in. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of hot glue, or uh, not hot glue, crazy glue, you know, uh, something to, to just go ahead and, uh, and uh, make sure those eyes don't get lopsided or crazy. And then we'll take our tarantula bar brush, and you can twist it a little bit, and then you'll just palmer it. As you fold back, you'll palmer it right up the shank. Go ahead and fold back. And Enrico makes these brushes in all kinds of crazy colors again to match the hatch you can buy white and make your own variations you know paint it color it and you'll wrap it up and see how tight I have it in there and we'll do one more wrap right against the eyes and then go ahead and tie it right in there behind those bead chains and we'll pull our fibers back a little more go ahead and tie it tie it and then get down at the bottom there and cut it off now the cool thing about this, these fibers are is they also part really well, and so you kind of want to pull it to the side to give that crab shell shape. Pull it to the side, pull it to the side, and the thing I love most again about this dubbing brush is that these tarantula fibers basically act like the crab's legs. It takes away from you having to tie in silly legs, adding more, too much to the fly. And then what you can also do is you can take a little bit of the extra here and just give it a nice little bit off the top. And that gives it that flat surface to ride perfectly on the bottom. We'll go ahead and we will uh, wrap our thread up. Whip finish it off. Which was like the worst place. My wife had a space conference there. And cut. And so what you do with this turd burglar is again, you can part the, the fibers there. You can keep a little bit of body on the top. But like I said, as long as you have that shaved top, or the bottom of the hook here, it'll just ride nice on the bottom. You can tie it weedless, tie in a little weed guard. And there you have it, the turd burglar. And you know, th this fly is not only perfect for bonefish, um, stripers, if you tie it on a bigger hook, uh, permit, you know, you can use this anywhere. And, and I'm big into carp, especially in this area. And I've used this and it works on big carp. It works well too. I mean, they'll eat anything. You, you really hear a lot about carp being a trash fish and how they're just vacuums and they'll eat anything. They'll eat a blue crab fly in a freshwater pond, you know? And I've caught stripers, bluefish, 
Redfish love these things. You know, the redfish, they absolutely love juvenile crabs. Uh, carp, bonefish, permit, you know, uh, reef species, snapper. So, yeah, I mean, you can check out the blog, check out the site. Um, ChesapeakeFlyCompany.com is where we're kind of migrating uh, tightline tales of a fly fisherman. But uh, if you haven't heard of us already, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Vimeo. Um, and check out the site. We do giveaways, we do gear reviews, we're hosting a bunch of trips this year. We always do fly tying tutorials and uh, we always just like to have fun. I'm Tom Colicchio. Hey, hello. <laughs> now I'm in the food business. My true passion is fishing. I've been invited to go sport fishing with Tom. What kind of fish are we going to catch in this New York harbor is what I'm wondering. You're not going to believe why I'm here today. I want to catch a big one. Put me in the ring with a good one, dude. I'm going to see if I can stuff it. <laughs> <laughs> and mount it on our wall. <laughs> Chefs are nuts and they are partiers. <laughs>